I read all your comments and I saw some people asking me how to write me a mail and where to contact me. Well, it is quite easy. My email, swisstorture at gmail.com, is in the open and visible to all here on my Gure channel and in fact on all my channels. And here in the picture it says as well swisstorture at gmail.com. Only unfortunately, for security reasons, I'm not using my email at all at the moment, as it says here, the Swiss danger. Because a few weeks ago, now in 2024, the Swissies tried to eliminate me here in France. It was around midnight and dark without street lamps, looking for a place to put my tent when suddenly behind me I heard someone say in Swiss German we will teach you now once and for all to call the Swiss police Nazis. In Swiss German that was me werde die jetzt Eis für aui mau lehre nicht wieder unsere Schweizer Polizei und Behörde Gang aus Nazis zu bezeichnen. I turned around and saw two men with guns standing in the dark. And before I could say something back, suddenly in this dark, deserted and forestal area, several cars came unexpectedly racing around the corner and down from the motorway, or highway as some call it. Two shots went off, and the sudden surprise gave me a very narrow time frame to step in the dark and hide. The cars had caught the two men in their headlights, and I saw them disappear. Immediately, the cars stopped, and an incredible amount of agitated men rushed out of the cars, swearing in French and Arabic, obviously thinking that they caught up in the middle of some French police action, whom apparently they had a severe grudge against. Nobody saw me, as it was dark, deserted and bushy. The Arab gang stayed for a few more minutes pulling out their cell phones, announcing the presence of some strangely behaving cops, as it must have seemed to them, to the entire Arabic community of the area. And with screaming tires they left. I cautiously exfiltrated the area and the entire region, not using my phone nor email anymore, together with further consequent safety measures. If the man in the cars would have been French, no car would have stopped, as the French are more into running away. But these Arabs tend to behave in an opposite way and dive into it where the action is. Moreover, because usually Muslims, and in this case Arabs, go around in large groups, especially in the night. And normally when I see Arabs and Muslims in general always sticking their nose in things happening, I think to myself, man, haven't you got anything better to do? Which I will never think again, as they save me that night with that sort of nosy behavior. And I'm thankful for that 
and won't forget it. So yeah, you can write me, but I don't know when I will feel safe enough again to write you back, which in due time will happen again, I suppose. Although it might take a few weeks or maybe months due to the Swiss threat. And their already second assassination attempt by the Swiss Nazi police by the use of firearms. The first time was in the winter of 2011, which I already told you in another video years ago. Switzerland is murder incorporated, and there's no state and no authority in the world that does anything against it, because Switzerland is Pharaoh's neutral base of this world. I told you how the Swiss torture and murder people by code O2T, oxygen deprivation, in their prisons for political prisoners. Here you can read it. I already showed that many times, but for people who are new here, I need to show this again. But there will be some new information as well in this video, so don't worry. You know, they've got murder factories, you know. They've murdered many, many people. Well, just look here in 2024 how Switzerland probably has the world's highest suicide rate in their prisons because of O2T, oxygen deprivation, and other Swiss murder techniques. And these people in these prisons, you know, they're most of all political prisoners, so they're not even criminals. The real criminals are the Swiss banksters and the and the the UNRWA Swiss director generals, and they don't go to prison. In my whole life, I've never seen so much evil as in Switzerland, where they've terrorized me and my family for twenty eight years now. The Swiss have plenty of murder factories to get rid of the people they don't like, as you could read here in the 2024 facts. One day the moment will come that you won't hear from me anymore. Then you'll know that the Swissies have executed their numerous murder threats. In the Western world dictatorship, the most dangerous thing to do, and it will get you burnt, is to open up your mouth. As Bill Cooper, Alan Watts, the Grey State guy, and many others did, who are all dead now and eliminated by the Octogon from the Alps. Why am I still alive? Is it luck or divine protection? Because statistically, I already should have joined the Bill Cooper Grey State hit list. I think I'm still alive because the Swissies have hard time finding me. As I have no daily routine, sleep in the bushes and forests, changing places every night, have Faraday pouches for telephone and laptop, use VPN, and I can integrate fairly easy into the various European countries due to linguistical skills. Human dignity 
and intelligence of the individual versus the lies and organized terror of an entire state and its people. In this time and era, they have taken away our rights to defend ourselves, needing to take blow after blow, punch after punch, with the only option to run, as the Native American medicine man told that medium once, that my Indian name is Running Wolf. Or, in this very case, Running Rabbit, running from the evil magicians of the Principality. And that's probably the difference, as Bill Cooper, Alan Watts, Gray State, and Julian Assange didn't run, making them easy targets, the so-called sitting ducks. Here to the right, you see Octagon here, and it says here, in case of whistleblower, break glass. And here's the gun behind the glass. So this is the Octagon in the Alps. And here you see the Swiss flag with a lot of cartridges. And here's probably 9 mil. This is a 308, I think. Uh, this is a 765, probably. And, you know, it says that in America they have a lot of guns. The Americans have a lot of guns. But actually, in Switzerland, they probably have the most guns in the world. And I'll tell you why. Because in America, not everyone has a gun. A lot of people, probably Democrats, they don't want to have a gun. But in Switzerland, everyone has a gun. You, it's even not allowed. It's illegal for a man not to have an assault rifle with bullets and fully automatic and everything. It's illegal, you know, because every man has to go into the army. So this is why actually Switzerland is the most armed nation in the world. Maybe in America, some people, you know, the statistics, they are falsified because some people, they have like 100 guns, like real gun nuts, you know. But then maybe uh, half of the population, they don't even have a gun. So is America really the most gun-owned um, country in the world? No, it isn't. Because in Switzerland, every house has an assault rifle and probably also a handgun. So Switzerland really is the most, they have the most guns in the entire world. So the Swissies have a worldwide license to kill. And no authorities from any other state will ever stop them. Just as in 2001, three heavily armed Swiss cops shot a Frenchman with 18 bullets in the back in France and received full protection by the French authorities who will always give the Swissies full license to kill in France. The Frenchman's name murdered in France by Swiss cops was Michel Hercouet, and I made this video about it. So the Swissies can just come in France and murder someone and get off with it, just as they tried with me a few weeks back. So here you can see his name, Michel Hercouet. Hercouet, he was a young man. He didn't get very old, thanks to the Swissies. So here's the title, and you can find it on my channel, Gatsefrat. You can see it's from 2012, so it's 12 years ago. Uh, I didn't even get 2,000 views, and only three comments, which you can read here. Uh, this was a nice guy, uh, an Arab. I had contact with him. He uh, 
He also copied some of my videos. I, I told him that's okay. And uh, they also terrorized him in, in Swaziland. So even the US State Department, they talk about it. So in August 2001, two police officers from Basel, which is in Switzerland, the, in French they call it Baal, you know, like Baalbek in Lebanon, Baal. And uh, they shot two Swiss police officers, they shot and killed Michel Hercoué. Oh, they Englified the name here, his name is Michel. Uh, they wrote Michael, well, that's the English version, just over the border in France. So two Swiss cops, they killed somebody in France. The unarmed Hercule, so he was unarmed. Eh? And the cops, they got off with it. You know, they never went to prison, never had any problems. They got completely protected in France. But what do you want, you know, with the director of the human rights is a Swiss in Strasbourg. And this also happened in Alsace, and Strasbourg is also in Alsace. It, it happened not far away from Strasbourg. So it says in French, 18 balles dans le dos. You got 18 bullets in the back. Sur territoire français, on the French territory. And they talked about it everywhere. The Swiss, they have license to kill, just as they tried with me a couple of weeks back and they know it. They know they can do with everything they want and they get off with it. They just get away with it. Here you can see the typical French battle flag, the white flag. Here it says French battle flag with Macron. So you see, it's no use to go and ask for help at the French authorities together with the fact that I've already dropped three complaints against the state of Switzerland and its people at the French state attorneys, on which I never even had an answer. So here you can see it. The first time was in Boulogne-sur-Mer in 2014. It was before the terrorist attacks in Paris and I had information, I could give them the names because I infiltrated the octagon and I, I was there when the Swiss industrials, they talked about doing terrorist attacks in France and I could have told them all this, but they just didn't care. All Freemasons and all these, all these justice departments. And then the second time, that was after the terrorist attacks in 2016, I thought, well, maybe something happened, you know, and I went to uh, Saint-Étienne. Then, never an answer. Then the third time, oh, there was in between. There was in, also in 2014, because I had this information. I, I wanted to give him the information. Uh, I, as I already had already contacted the French police and everything, the government, I didn't get an answer. So I, I went back again on the Mar March the 24th. So that was still before the terrorist attacks. I, I, we could have prevented it, you know, but they just didn't care. You know, it's the French white flag, you know. Here again, March 24th. I dropped a complaint here in Mande. Here it says, Mande. Le parquet, Mande. Yeah, so I three times, and also dropped a complaint at the um, the human rights in uh, Strasbourg. My uh, pl my complaint was treated by a Swissie, Madame Easily, and at that time it was still the Swiss, the still the uh, the the first director of the Human Rights Commission in Strasbourg. Well, it was a Swissie, and he was still there. Um, I, I, I told you his name uh, somewhere, I, I don't recall it now. And here you can see a Swiss flag. It's called, uh, they have these vertical sort of flags. It's called a Knatterfahne. I, I have no idea what that means. Fahne, it means a flag with my Knatter. Yeah, Knatter, it, may, it means like uh, making a noise, you know, like fireworks, you know. 
uh, why maybe it makes a noise, you know, like, you know, in the wind, like, I don't know. But here you can see the colors red and white. Why? Well, because they're the colors of the Knights Templars. But why do it again? Because it's already in the flag here. Well, because it's the the red house of Pharaoh and the white house. It's Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. And they know it. You know, it's all there. They do it here again. And um, his name was like the director. His name was Josef. I don't recall it. Funny enough, he went to see Putin, and a couple of weeks later, uh, he died. It uh, was probably another victim of Mr. Putin. So, and I, I, I tried everything, you know, I tried everything. It's no use, you know. Swissies can do whatever they want. They got complete license to kill. So, I just recalled his name, Lucius Wildhaber. There he is. Uh, he was born in Basel, Switzerland. There's the flag. He was the first president of the European Court of Human Rights. And uh, so how is it possible? Switzerland is not even part of the European community. How is this possible that the Europe that a Swissy is the president and he was the president over 20 years I think. That he was the president of the um, the Human Rights Commission for 20 years in a European, in the capital of the European community, Strasbourg. How is this possible? Well, I told you. You know, they control everything, the Swissies. You know? It says, oh, he died in 2020. I thought he died in... before. Um... Or well, this is about Ocalan, or what? Um, right, it says, yeah, he died 2020. So, he, he was the first president in what year? That was, uh, it says here, in 1991. And then he was the president of the ECHR, the European Com Court for Human Rights. From uh, so that's twenty years altogether, you know. And I was there. I dropped a complaint in the year two thousand and one, and I even went there twice uh, in two thousand and two. So he was the the president. So you want to know the answer, you know? Negative, of course. They all protected Switzerland and uh, Mrs. Easily. I remember that name for the rest of my life. Eh? They, uh, it's, it's a conspiracy, you know. And um, so, as I just told you before, he went to Russia, see Putin, and uh, he said he got poisoned there. Spasiba <laughs> tovarish. So here it says, you know, I was poisoned by Russians, human rights judge says in 2007. Russian officials yesterday dismissed Mr. Wildhaber's, uh, Luchus Wildhaber allegations as laughable and said there was no evidence he had been poisoned. Well, and here in the official Russian thing here. And there's a lot of, so that was in 2007 and he died in 2020. So uh, there's probably this, some sly Swissy movement, move, you know, because if the Russians would have really poisoned him, he would have been dead immediately. Eh? And he lived there for another 13 years. Eh? Yeah. Spasiba Tavarish, Komitet Gosudarstvenoi Bezopasnostia. And especially now, after my last revealing video on the Templar Principality in the Alps and their involvement in literally everything and all major events of 2024, I know that Swissy will drastically increase their elimination efforts and i hope you will understand 
that when I will disappear, my channels and videos will be terminated as well. And all will be as if nothing ever happened, totally erased from history.